Hi, this is Michael with Iconasys. Today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video communicating one of our newest features inside of our software, the pipeline processing. Uh, this feature is going to allow users not only to streamline uh, their product photography workflows, but also to standardize them. It uh, essentially will allow a one-click end-to-end product photography workflow from capture to editing to processing to renaming and output. Uh, without further ado, let's get started here. This is the main UI of the software. I have my camera positioned shooting inside. We're working with our LumiPad 360 Lightbox here. And the first thing we're going to notice, obviously, while the camera is in live view here, is that it looks a little bit dark. So let's go ahead and adjust our camera settings to optimize for our lighting environment. Uh, the nice thing about when we make camera setting changes, we can see the results in real time on the monitor screen through the use of exposure simulation. Um, so that looks pretty good there. Uh, a little bit underexposed, but I do prefer to shoot that way. And pardon me, I probably should have mentioned that we're gonna walk through a standard product photography workflow. And then at the kind of end of the video, we're gonna tie it all together and show you the just the overall power and efficiencies of the pipeline processing feature. So we've adjusted our camera settings. Everything looks good here. What we want to do is probably next pre-crop our subject. We're going to say only take a picture of what's inside this area here. And then once it looks good to go, we're going to hit our snap button. And typically we'd go and shoot multiple different images. Let me just show you that image that we just captured. Um, pretty good quality image. Again, a little bit underexposed, but we're going to fix that pretty easily. Um, now typically I'd go and shoot three or four or five different angles of my product. Um, I won't do that just for the purpose of the pipeline processing here, just to kind of speed up the video. Um, but at the end, we will shoot multiple product images. So um, we're going to select that image. And our next step typically would be to go ahead and um, edit the image. We probably need a transparent or pure white background. So we're going to use our AI background removal feature. And let me just hit preview. And this is one of our latest features inside of our software. And what this does is use the power of artificial intelligence to understand where a product is versus where a background is. So we can see it did a great job at cutting out. Now, what I'm going to do here before I apply this, I'm just using the default settings, which are going to be good for 99% of the time. Um, but what I want to do is create a profile. So I'm just going to call this AI BR, just a name that I can remember here. And let me just hit apply. And we're going to see that takes a few seconds to apply to the image, but again, uh, probably much faster than any other background removal or manual cutout um, tool and other software. So we've done that. The next thing that I do see here, and you probably don't notice it much, there is a little bit of edge bleed here, kind of a soft edge. So what I want to do is just sharpen that up. I'm going to use my magic wand tool. I'm going to select a transparent pixel. I'm going to constrain that selection to a clicked region. And what I want to do is mask grow. And I'll probably do a mask grow of about seven or so. And what that's going to do is just eat into the product a little bit. We're working with a lot of pixels here. And again, what I'm going to do is just create a profile for this. I'll just call this mask grow. Okay. So let me just, I'll apply that to the image. All right. Now my next step would probably be some sort of basic adjustment here. So I just want to lighten this up. Again, it looks a little bit dark. So we want to make an adjustment. Let's just use our levels tool. And it looks pretty good there. And then maybe I'll just want to increase my sharpness a tad. And that looks pretty good there. So I'm going to create another profile here just called basic adjustments. And then maybe my very last step would be to just add some frame on the bottom. It's cropped a little bit tight here. So what I'd like to do is just add some canvas on the bottom. We're going to add some transparent canvas on the bottom. We're just going to put, uh, let's add 150 pixels. And then we, you can see in the preview here, maybe we'll do 125 here. Okay, so that looks good. And I'm just going to create a profile for this as well. Add canvas bottom okay so I'll just hit uh, close all right so those are kind of my standardized kind of features to edit the image um, you can add as many features as you want inside of that editing pipeline um, but again just for the purpose of the video we're going to try to keep it a bit quick now my last step after capture editing will be to output 
We're going to go into our bat save tool. We also do have our dynamic save tool, which is very powerful. Um, but just for the simplicity of this video, we're going to just use batch save. So what I'm going to do inside of here is we're going to create another profile here, which we're going to use in the pipeline processing. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to keep the file name because we're going to use a feature inside of the software for pre-naming. Um, the next thing we want to do is sequential naming. So it'll be, you know, if we have multiple images, dash 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Um, we're going to output as a JPEG image. Um, if we wanted to retain the transparent properties, that is the clear background, you could do PNG or TIFF. You can also do a WebP format. You can choose your image quality settings, resolution, and also choose to resize your images. So for instance, I know for my website, I want images at 1200 pixels wide. And then my last step, since I'm outputting as a JPEG, I want to choose the color at which I output um, the background. So Maybe we're going to choose, let's just do a grayish background. We'll just do 238, 238, 238 RGB. Um, if you don't know what that means, basically it's just a, a light gray background. I will hit OK. And now what we want to do here is just create a profile. So I'm just going to call this Mike's Save Profile. And we won't go through, and obviously we want to choose our output path. Um, I won't go through the actual save process, but... Um, we've just uh, obviously created that save profile. So now what we want to do is put all these together into a pipeline. So I'm going to choose my options area and I'm going to go down to pipeline processing. And if you recall, we created just previously a bunch of profiles in our editing tool um, and for our savings. So let's go ahead and add these. And basically everything that I add here is going to be applied in whatever order I add it to the image. And let me just explain what this is. So, and it's the exact order that I just walked through everything. So it's going to remove the background using the AIBR profile. It's going to do a mass grow and just eat into the product a little bit and just kind of smooth up those ed edges. Um, it's going to make a slight color adjustment using our levels tool and add sharpness. Then it's going to add some canvas to the bottom of the image. Then it's going to output the image. So we've created our pipeline prof uh, processing profile. I'm just going to give it a name, Mike pipeline okay so let me just hit close here all right now we're ready to communicate the workflow so let me just delete this thumbnail we're gonna start with a fresh kind of cue here and what I want to do is go into my live view now inside of live view options as I'd mentioned earlier what we're gonna do is we're gonna say prename our images and we're not gonna see anything happen until we actually hit the snap button but I'm just remember I've enabled prename images now the next thing I want to do is we're going to just use a different snap mode. If I just hit snap here, it's going to capture a single image. As previously mentioned, um, I want to shoot multiple images and let's do that in an automated kind of process here. So I'm going to use our custom define shooting tool. Now if I click these three little dots here, that's going to let me define my custom define sequence. So I'm going to say capture a total of three images and I want to capture an image every let's say four seconds. So it's going to go snap count to four, then snap again, count to four, then snap the third image. Um, you can go into your advanced options, you can enter tips. So maybe you're watching back on the screen and it says, you know, turn object 90 degrees for image two. Uh, you can enter that information in here just if you wanted some visual feedback. And I'm just gonna hit okay here. So we've just defined our custom defined shooting profile. Now the very last step here, what we wanna do is we want to, the pipeline processing profile, we want to say automatically apply that to our images. So I'm going to go ahead and hit control, right click on custom define, and I'm going to choose Mike pipeline. Now what's going to happen when I hit snap, it's going to automatically apply that pipeline that we defined. So in, there's going to be one last step here. When I hit custom define snap, it's going to pop up the pre-naming. So maybe I have a barcode scanner. We can scan in that name or else we can manually name our object and we can say sequential name so it'll be dash 010203 or else we could do a manual name and we could say front, side, back, whatever we needed but let's just for the purpose of this demo we'll choose sequential naming and we will hit OK to start the process um, for each of the three images I'll reach inside and um, adjust the location of the object we're shooting so I'll hit OK and the process will start you'll hear your camera snap the first image I've adjusted the object to my second angle and also my third angle. 
So we're going to see it's captured all three images. And as you can see now, it's starting to walk through the pipeline processing. The first thing that applied is the crop. And the next thing that's applying is our background removal tool. Um, again, this is pretty resource intensive on our computer here. But as you can see in the bottom left corner, it's gone ahead and put them all on transparent backgrounds. Um, if I recall, our next step would be to apply the color correction and then probably add some uh, canvas at the bottom. And then as we can see, the prompt up top, batch, save, finish. So let's take a look at our images, one, two, and three. And let's take a look at the folder where we output our images. As we can see here, image one, two, and three, all on our gray background with the pre-naming that we had defined. Um, so again, that's our pipeline processing, a kind of a one-click workflow that allows you to kind of streamline and standardize your product photography. If you have any questions, the company name is Iconasys and the software is called Shutterstream Product Photography Software. Thank you.